Hi, I'm Brad Power, and I'm uh, the host of Linnea Hackathon. Uh, this is the weekly update, um, and we'll have, as usual, a 15-minute uh, formal session will be recorded, and then about a half hour roundtable. Um, I'm beaming to you from Mass General Hospital, usually where Linnea is being treated, where I just had a, a Mohs surgery on my face, and they've given me a break between scrapes. <laughs> so I'll be, <laughs> I'll be dropping off after, uh, after 15 minutes. Um, so Linnea, what's, what's, the, what's the update on um, your progress? All right, so the, the variety of things I can report is that um, I think I had said I had a scan this week and I was wrong, it's next week, it was pushed back. So next Wednesday, I'll have a scan, the following Monday, a scan review. And um, that is also when I'm going to have the down and dirty discussion with my oncologist about the biopsy. And hopefully the scan will be indicative of whether or not that is possible. Um, on the data front, Citizen now has my um, images as well. And it sounds like they should be finished uploading by the end of today or maybe tomorrow. Um, There's a lot of scans, Linnea. There are. The computer is just <laughs> like uploading them right now. <laughs> so it'll I take, I think, over 14 that. hours to upload all your DICOMs. So. <laughs> all right. There's a lot. But um, I found out how to permission sharing. And we can discuss the best way to do that. Um, I can either enter individual emails or I can just share my login information so people can go on whenever they want but that should all be there within a couple of days and then I had um, a good meeting with Certis talking about the possibility of my getting tissue and then them doing a mouse model and Brad, this is one of those companies where it has to get there within 24 hours. You know, it's gotta be fresh. And um, yet um, the potential sounds really interesting. And once again, they are generously offering to do this gratis. So it's, it's quite an opportunity. So I'm, I'm hoping that will be possible. And on the painting front, not much to report. Very cool. Um, Sophia, any uh, any other update from the citizen standpoint and the data uploading and accessing? Linnea is the person who holds the keys to her kingdom on her citizen profile. So it'll be up to her how she chooses to share it with the hackathon. Those are kind of the two methods that are probably easiest. Um, again, up to Linnea. In terms of data acquisition, so we've gotten all the records, all the DICOMs, next step, um, and then Brad, this was kind of the update on our end. Uh, we have a resident who's working for us part-time who specializes in lung cancer pathology. And so he's gonna be taking the lead from a clinical perspective on our end. And so that cancer card will be ready sometime next week uh, as he kind of reviews all of the process data coming out of our pipeline from those 5,000 pages and then uh, summarizes that into a summary. So maybe we wait until that's published before we share it, just because 5,000 pages can be a little overwhelming. Um, and then once it's shared, maybe next week, I'm happy to kind of do a five minute walkthrough or, or Brad, I could record it and we could send it via email, just like how to navigate around the citizen profile, where you can look at the raw records, where you can see the scans and kind of what the cancer summary highlights. Um, for this group of clinicians, we are a technology company, not clinicians. And so what we make it possible to do is just find documents is really what this timeline is. So if you click into the pathology report, you're actually gonna see the original document right next to that statement with the extracted text. So you can navigate kind of original source documents that way. So 
Um, once that is live and ready, maybe we'll uh, we'll record a short video to make it easy for folks. And I'm also happy to be a resource. Feel free to email me. I'm on the Slack channel um, if you want to learn more, or click around together. <laughs> so, Sophia, um, I, I recall for Bryce, it was really powerful when you saw his PSA scores over time and when you could map them against interventions. So I took this mm -hmm. therapy and my PSA plunges. And there are a lot of cancers, if they're lucky enough to have a biomarker, that you can sort of track the time of that biomarker and then um, map it against the interventions. Uh, is Does the citizen timeline enable that kind of explication? It is not currently overlaid, you know, with kind of the, the graph with vertical lines kind of highlighting different treatment times. That sounds really helpful. And so part of, um, I guess, my ask to this group is as you use the platform any feedback requests, it would be helpful if is incredibly valuable because we're constantly improving how we visualize this data and the best feedback and perspective is from physicians. This is truly um, a wonderful group to learn from. So please don't be shy with suggestions like that because I agree that would be um, quite helpful. And the, the individual who you're, you're gonna have assigned is, was it Tony Cardillo? Is that, am I remembering right? Yes, and Tony yeah. has joined us, so oh, Tony, say nice. hello. Yes, <laughs> and, and you pronounced it right too, so bonus points. Right. <laughs> yeah, so Tony, if you could maybe, uh, with Sophia's help or something, maybe next week or another time to sort of walk us through that with as much as you can tell about the timeline and like when interventions happen. Is there a biomarker, and this is a question for Linnea and for Tony, is there a biomarker for your ALK positive where you're tracking uh, levels, or is it only scans that allows you to monitor the, the aggressiveness of your cancer? It's scans for me. My um, oncologist never took, um, never put credence in tracking any markers. So uh, actually my fantasy has been, and again, you know, it's more maybe a bells and whistle thing than diagnostic, but I have so many scans that there is an opportunity there to get the same slice and do some sort of animation that I think would be just very powerful as far as the waxing and waning. But, you know, again, it, it might be more of a fun visual than anything that is diagnostic. Well, we, we are hoping that um, Kim Marie Kulig with uh, Path Presenter will do a version of that, maybe not an animation, but be able to host all of the scans and allow pathologists for us to have a mini hackathon just on examining the scans and maybe looking at that at 5,000 scans over time and seeing if there are, there's anything, because you are unique in, in having such a rich treasure trove of, of scan data. Not 5,000, but there are a couple hundred. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. The other possibility that it might be relevant for this hackathon is we have the ability to export the extracted data into CSV or JSON files. And so if folks want to be able to play around and slice and dice outside of our UI, that's something also, Linnea, that we could do is just export right. it so that and you know, post it to the Slack channel. Again, I will give it to you for you to do with what you want. But um, wanted to highlight that because it could be another resource to make it more easy to manipulate and do things like those overlays and okay. mappings. And um, what, uh, the CSV file that you just described, what would that, uh, what would be the information in the CSV? All of the extracted clinical data that is comprising of that cancer card. And so the way we organize it in CSV format is, you know, basically every column is every entity, so histological type, um, you know, and then every row is different statements in that category. And so it's a flat file that keeps the kind of relationship between all the entities. And so it's how a lot of our researchers will themselves kind of dig into the data. So again, you can look at it, see if it's helpful, but we can make that available as well. Okay, sure. Thanks. And then 
above and I don't know if anyone is API savvy, we actually, our API is probably the best tool in terms of accessing this highly structured data. And so if anyone has appetite to, to use the API, we can also make that available. And again, everything is tokenized based on the consent that Linnea gives. Okay, the last thing in our in our formal session, I just wanted there are a couple folks on from Lucense, uh, Jeffrey Dunklin and and James Sue, just wanted to mention that uh, the Lucense liquid biopsy results have been posted on the Slack. If anybody wants to see that report, as well as the Foundation Medicine report with the identification of uh, variants, um, so if anybody wants to refer to that, anything from Jeffrey or James. Yes, yeah, so I asked Dr. Sue to, to join us in case uh, there were any specific questions. I know uh, Dr. Tan had, had discussed the results last week, um, and uh, I, I wanted Dr. Sue here as well in case there were any other, and I don't know if he wants to, to have a, a few remarks on it to begin with, but uh, he's definitely here to, to field any questions if needed as well. So thanks, Dr. Sue. Yep, I'm happy to answer any questions you guys have on, on the results we, we posted on TP53 in particular. Right. Um, I believe um, Han Tan, my colleague, has already gone through the results with you guys last in the last, last session. Um, but yeah, we're very happy to take questions. So Dr. Sue and uh, everyone from Lucens, can I ask, how confident are you about the 0.22% um, allele frequency, sorry, allele, allele fraction? Yeah, so um, in, our, in terms of our panel, so I, I believe um, Han has described this. So we have a 0.1% uh, median LOD across our panel, and mm -hmm. we reported the TP53 at 0.22%. So we, we can be pretty confident with, with the variant calling. Perfect. Just wanted to clarify. Yeah, we also believe at, at CureMatch that, you know, um, if you have a, a driver, even if it's a, not the most dominant population, for instance, even then you need to pay attention to it because if you don't address it, that's the first subclonal population that will come and take over, so to yeah, speak. So it's, it's important to, um, to be mindful of it. In general, if there's going to be some kind of a tumor board discussion planned soon, um, I think I'd be ready um, to, to present some of the combination therapy options for consideration of the oncologist. And I don't know how the, the treat, treating oncologist right now is, is uh, feeling about the next steps, but I think that we should try to plan for that and then, you know, uh, see if something can be already pursued while we still gather other data and maybe get into, you know, the whole consideration of nutraceuticals and whatever else, because we probably don't want to um, kind of miss the time slot if we can already start with something. Allie, you impress me every time you speak. Oh, thank you. And I'm sorry I'm not on video right now, but um, nice to see y'all. Thank you. So, so those who don't know, Allie's with CureMatch, and so you can tell how um, knowledgeable she is about taking this diagnostic information from the scans and the sequencing and, and putting into uh, treatment options, which is really the, the function of this hackathon to give Linnea a full range of, of good treatment options. Um, I'm going to uh, stop the recording now. Um, cause we're at like 15 minutes. Brad, 